that's the down right there. So as I go to push that down, while the club and my arms are still working up, I'm falling down. While the club and the arms are still working up, I'm falling down. Let's talk about how we downshift to transition our downswing. Okay, Milo, so thank you, downshift, first off, for sending us this. We're going to be, uh, I'll link it above so you guys can go get one. But stick around, watch this whole video, because this is a, a helpful tool to probably one of the biggest issues we see amongst amateur golfers, and that is how they're moving pressure and how the, the tendency is to be late with how they move pressure. For sure, that's that's what we see. Okay, so before we use this, let's let's do a little walkthrough. And this goes to some of the videos maybe you've seen us do with Swing Catalyst. Uh, you did the driving force with Be Better Golf and Swing Catalyst. And we also had Dr. Scott Lynn out at our recent golf school in San Diego. Yeah, that was fun. Very so fun. now I can move pressure without moving mass. And that's putting energy into the system. Don't let them pull you over. Better. Oh, yeah. But I want you to get right up through it like normal down oh, okay. oh. Like we got to work on that. We got to get him to post up better. And we look at the ground reaction force. We're like, no, you don't. This guy's elite in how he does it. So it's there you go. Yeah, oh, yeah I like that's it. better. Yeah. Just and just squash that thing and then smash it. Nice. nice. That's money. That nice. Very cool. So uh, if you haven't seen a video already, you'll be seeing some soon um, with Scott. So that was really exciting. And the biggest thing we saw and having talked to him too with amateurs is they don't get pressure moving in the right sequence and at the right time. And the tendency is to not get left early enough in transition. Yeah, they tend to, they go right, they stay right, they start down and then they try to go left. So by then it's already way yeah. too late. Everything when, should have been already rolling. And when we say left, back to the lead side, just yeah. for you lefties out there, it'll be back to your right side. But so they're kind of off the ball, probably coming out of their bends. We talk about that a lot. They sort of collect themselves and then everything's together. Yeah, so they arrive at the top of the backswing with everything to the right. So they've got, yeah. like, I saw it with our, our students at the golf school, like almost all of them, yeah. had close to 100% of their pressure on the trail foot as they were getting ready to start the club yeah. down. Almost at the top, right? Yeah. So now, where was our max pressure right? So yours, your max pressure right actually happened before the club moved. Almost too early. Yeah, we were trying to get you to be a little later. My max pressure right was right here. The club hadn't even moved yet. So you went, and you got fairly good amount of pressure. You were up in the 80s. The thing they got to realize as they watch this is the difference between weight and pressure, mass, and pressure. Okay, you, too many times the, the, the words weight transfer or weight shift have been thrown out there. Yeah. It's really, let's look at the pressure that we're moving. Exactly. And, and my pressure reaches max to the trail side, somewhere around shaft parallel in yeah. the backswing. So yeah. Pretty early as well. And it starts to wander itself. So because there's a lot of pressure under this foot, if I see how that starts to move me yeah. toward my lead foot. Yeah, so not only is the pressure getting right early, but the pressure, because we're applying that pressure on a diagonal direction, it's pushing us back. It's sending you back to the middle. So I like to think of it, I told you off camera, I kind of think of it like a speed skater. So when I do speed skaters in the gym, when I land, let's say I'm landing here, I'm not, I could just stop here and hold or you could if I wanted to, just keep going or over. I could keep falling over. But when I land, the pressure I'm applying is on a diagonal. So if I'm doing it quickly, it's going to push me back. So it's almost like I'm hitting, a, I'm landing on a wall this way or a diagonal. And then it's boom, 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 boom. And you can go fast. And it keeps me rather centered if you notice. So your, your upper body doesn't move around all that much. Uh huh. It's a good analogy towards yeah. how we use our, our legs in the, in the golf swing. So this is what you see in the top players is that their pressure is moving into their right foot or trail foot fairly early on in the golf swing and they're using it to push themselves 
back yeah. to their middle and left side earlier. For sure, way earlier than the average amateur. Mm -hmm. Now there's different pressure traces for different players. Some players get more pressure into their yeah. trail side and the ones that get more pressure usually get, get it there later. Mm -hmm. But even still, by the time they've arrived at the change of direction of the golf club, yeah. so the, the top of the backswing, they are back around 50-50 generally. So they, they started back forward and they're back 50-50 under their feet. And then where do we tend to see the max lead side pressure, would you say? For longer hitters, earlier. So you're going to see lead, lead side pressure max out somewhere just above arm parallel for the longest guys. In the downswing. In the downswing. And for the more normal professionals, somewhere right around left arm parallel. So usually, you know, right around left arm parallel, that's where you're really... The pressure max out when you stop yourself from falling because yeah. the transition is not necessarily level. It's actually, a, we're falling down. Ah, downshift. Yeah. There you go. And that's a good title for it because, again, I think there's a misconception out there that they're trying to get their weight mass left and I think they think that they should be doing it at impact. I should get all my pressure and weight on my left side at impact when in reality when you look at the tour pros their pressure is actually starting to go back the other way at impact. Yeah, by impact they're already in the <laughs> other direction. They're going back. Yeah. So you gotta get left sooner and you gotta push off your right side sooner. Pushing off your right side late to get to your left at impact that's the look we see. The other biggest problem I saw with our 10 students was very little vertical pressure change. And what that tells you is that there's no change in, in their, their height or their center of mass yeah. never falls. Yeah. Because you, if you want to have big verticals, you have to have a fall so you can stop it. Just like if you want to have pressure under your right foot, you've got to stop it. Because there's a lot of power in that. That's a huge speed producer and it's also helpful for being able to rotate. So if you're, if you're not falling, you're probably going to have a hard time rotating. It's just like we talk about like a, a figure skater or if I told you to, to jump and twirl as much as you can in one jump, well, I can't do much from just standing here. I have to lower first. Yeah. And then I can really crank myself around. For sure. So the lowering is a big part of it. Again, downshift. So let's do a few practice swings with it just so they can see how it works. I like to kind of get rocking first before I even start swinging. So you can see my feet are countering the motion of the club, right? And my left foot, you can see the board is down on my lead side now. That's going to swing the club back around. Now as the club is approaching the peak point on this side, I'm going to start going the other way. Yeah. You call it a swing set. A little bit of a swing set kind of motion. There's a lot of flow in this too. Now look at my chest and head, Milo. Am I moving a lot side to side? Not a ton. So I'm fairly centered and stacked up through the middle of my body. But you can see I'm moving pressure. Mm -hmm. If I was really moving my mass, I would have a hard time to get back there. It's probably going to happen a lot later. Because I almost got to collect myself. You better have... A very slow transition, yeah. so you give yourself time to recover. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard for me to do. Yeah. Especially for me, because my max pressure is like to the right, right there. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm back. Yeah, you're going back left. <laughs> By the time the club is moved, you're going back left. I think that's part of the reason my backswing, I energize it so quickly. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of velocity off the ball. You, your backswing has more swing speed than most people's swings. <laughs> okay, okay so Milo, so I showed a little bit. Show me the down part, though. That's what we want to see. The and why, down. why it's so important. Okay, so let me get this thing moving. That's the down right there. So as I go to push that down, while the club and my arms are still working up, I'm falling down. While the club and the arms are still working up, I'm falling down. So you're opposing, basically. You're creating that stretch. That's, yeah, it's helping me create a stretch in my arms so yeah. then I can sling them. So as I'm winding up, I'm stretching. I'm creating a big stretch. 
Now I'm changing direction, and then I can unload what I just stretched out. Mm -hmm. Just like any athletic movement. If I'm going to jump, yep. stretching and then contracting and jumping up. It's the same thing. So when you made that down, not only is your foot moving more into that board, pressuring, but to me, I also saw some knee flex. I saw some hip hinge, your yep. chest kind of lowered, your yep. head so lowered. My mass hopefully is reaching its highest point sometime just before I change directions. Yep. So I'm going up, now my entire mass is dropping. Yep. And so it's, there's added flex in the knees, added hip flex in the hip, hips, and my spine is going from extended to flexed. All that's happening. It's creating a lot of downforce that I can catch myself with and convert and it into... Shoot it back up and around. Shoot it back out. So for some of you, maybe you shouldn't get as right as you do, but I think if you guys think about getting left maybe sooner, that can help at least set things up a little bit better. Yes. I really am not a huge fan of the idea of feeling like I'm staying to the left, but if I can feel like I really fast, right, left. Yeah. That's a pretty good idea for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Most of us are not quick enough to even make that happen. So yeah. it's gonna time it more like what we want it to be. So I guess we gotta hit some of this thing, huh? Okay, let's try it. Just wanted to say thank you to Swing Away Golf Studio for this awesome setup for today's videos. In my personal experience, Milo, I've found that hitting full shots is tough. It, it gets a little tricky, and maybe you shouldn't do that at first because of the well, board spins. Of the, the board, board's gonna try to spin out of, from under you. And the reason is, is because pressure, again, it's not just moving up and down and on a line to and from the target, it's also moving all over the place. It's, 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 yeah, it's kind of messy looking when you actually look at the yeah. traces. But left foot's pushing this way and this way. Right foot's pushing this way and spinning that way. Yeah. So this board wants to do that. And you're also changing your weight. So the board, if you're really powerful, the board will spin. Yes. And I have, <laughs> I'll add a video of me doing this at the driving range so you guys can see with a full eight iron, pretty much going all out, the board spun. You'll see it face on and down the line. But why don't we do some where we maybe take a little speed off so they can yeah. see the... I'll just do a little flowy one. So even there it spun just a little bit. Do one where you uh, you do a little more of a trigger or toss the club out to the target a little sure. bit so they can see it moving a little bit more. So like, boom, boom. So that would be a nice little exercise they can do. Yeah. And even good. if they didn't have the board, they could just do it with some heel taps or. Yeah, I have people do it all the time with just heel taps just yeah. to get the feel of how to. Yeah. Get this this heel planted back down while the club is still. Yeah. Ascending. But the nice thing with this is it kind of forces you to sequence it right, or else you're going to be hung back. And you know, if I do it wrong, I want to feel what that would feel like. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even start down. How do people do that? Uh, you just toss the club at it. Come on. Well, I'm not used to hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. That was pure. All right, let me try one. Give it a whirl. I'll be going. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. That was a softy. Down the line. Whoosh, whoosh. You see that board spin out. Yeah, I put too much energy into it. Carpet's a little slicker than grass. My pattern is a lot of torque and a lot of vertical, <laughs> so the board gets too light, it's like doing an ollie on a skateboard. <laughs> Well, that time you did it without the toss to the target, but there's still that triggers. 
That was pretty good. Got a foot off the line. Yeah, hit it good. So our recommendation, if you guys get this board, is maybe don't hit balls for like a little bit. Just do it as an exercise. Really good for just producing the proper flow of pressure from foot to foot. So do it at the house and then take it to the range. You can maybe hit some little dinkers, we call them, and then you can build it up. Probably not going to want to hit driver with it because you kind of need a, well, maybe you could hit driver with it, but it's really just start with some shorter clubs and hit some little low shots and, yeah. and get the, the sequence right and then take it out of play and go hit one where you start maybe feeling a little bit of that what you felt on the board, some heel tappers maybe, right? We like heel tappers for that. Mm -hmm. Go let it rip. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay, right. so get yourself a uh, downshift board. I'll link it uh, above and below. And thanks again to Swingway Golf Studio for uh, giving us the space for the afternoon.